Before this video starts, I want to apologize for taking 3 months to make this video. I want to make this video a true follow up to the original. I basically wrote with the entire script and wasn't really happy with how it originally turned out. For those who don't know, I actually made a video talking about why I think the end is a horrible boss fight and one of if not the worst final boss fights in a Sonic game. In my original video, I talked about these 4 points which basically highlight my problems with the original end boss fight. These points are as followed. 1. The gameplay is reused from the hacking minigame. 2. No real personality or story. 3. Having a boring design. 4. Solaris is better. This last point doesn't really make sense unless you've seen the original video, but basically it's a bonus point that I kinda tacked on at the end, explaining why Solaris is kind of a better version of the end. But going back to point number 1, let's compare the new final boss to the previous one. Now when comparing gameplay, it's pretty obvious which one comes out on top. Comparing this new version to its budgeted counterpart, it's really no competition. You can really see how much effort they put into this version compared to the original. They even gave us these amazing action scenes, like Sonic crossing his arms, turning his back, and then rushing the end, and then only the last second does he go so fast, the end can't even see what hit them. Or the extremely awesome side loop animation, where Sonic snaps his fingers, and then proceeds to break every single bone in the end's body. Man, Super Sonic 2 is so cool. Wait a minute, Super Sonic 2? That's right, Super Sonic 2 is the coolest thing ever. I love how you can see the difference in their power when the boss fight starts out, with Super Sonic barely being able to do any damage, and he can't even parry the meteorites that are shot up by the end. However, this new version becomes so powerful that not only is the damage noticeably increased, but whenever he parries any of the end's attacks, you can see that he swats it away with his hand, as if it were literally nothing. Even when the end uses its all-out attack, you can see that it actually overwhelms Super Sonic 2 and knocks him out of his form, but then Sonic actually pulls himself back together, and then re-enters the Super Sonic 2 state then points to the end and literally calls them out. With Sonic's ranks now drastically declined, he has to beat the boss before it's too late. <sighs> Man, this is so much better than the original. By the way, what did we really get in the original fight again? Oh yeah, Sonic gets thrown at the end by Sage. And it doesn't really do anything because the end is still alive and Sage has to carry the boss fight more than she already did before. In the original, Sage pretty much just did all the damage to the end, and Sonic could even take it home to finish off the boss fight. Sage had to do that as well. She was also the one who was able to stop the end's laser, as when Sonic tried, he really couldn't do anything. You can even see Sonic take his hands off of the laser, because Sage can pretty much just handle it. Why isn't Sonic doing anything in this boss fight when he was the main character up until this point? Also, a side note, why does Sage die in this boss fight? She can literally teleport outside of the Titan. Maybe you can only make an excuse that her teleportation is short range, therefore she couldn't teleport to Eggman or Sonic or anyone. However, what's stopping her from teleporting outside of the Titan before it enters the end? Like literally, they're in space. Once it's in motion, it's not going to stop just because she teleported out of it. It basically just seems like a needless sacrifice they tried tacking on to make it seem sadder. <sighs> but you know, I mean, it's whatever. Let's see how the Final Horizons handle its ending. Wait, what? Sage, Eggman, and Sonic's friends are actually doing something? Unlike Super Sonic in the original boss fight that literally did nothing? Oh my god, is that the Sonic Power Cannon? Why did Sage do this in the original boss fight? This is literally what we needed. Wait, hold on, is that Fleaway Super Sonic? So needless to say, the gameplay is obviously a lot better in this version of the boss fight. It stays true to the other boss fights that we've come to know in this game, and just like all of them, they try to one-up each other with even cooler action scenes. Unlike the original end, which had one action scene which really wasn't that cool. Moving on to our next point, no real personality or story. For the personality slash story aspect of the final boss, I originally argued that it was pretty bland. Sure it had a really nice speech and all, but it basically boiled down to, I am a superior life form, you are inferior, I'm going to destroy you. It basically has no real character and it's just kind of a bland being of destruction, despite the fact that it talks. Where in my video, I basically talked about how characters like Chaos or the Biolizard tell a more compelling story even though they're rampaging monsters who can't talk. However, in the Final Horizons update, they actually do try to make it a lot more interesting. And I'm not gonna lie, it actually works. In the Final Horizon update, we get to see more of the Titan pilots. Compare this to the original where we pretty much got like nothing from them at all. Only some brief scenes in like one flashback cutscene. And one thing that actually stuck with me in the DLC is what the Pilot of Supreme had to say. He is the person who people looked up to for inspiration and hope. He was, to them, what Sonic is to this world. He even acknowledges this and tells Sonic that he is this world's hero now. While playing the story, I really felt the connection between Supreme's pilot and Sonic, as they really are similar. And when we get to the final boss, they actually kind of build off of this. You can see when the end tries to take control of Supreme, you can actually see the spirit of Supreme's pilot struggling against the end. 
as the end is now taking control of his titan, as he becomes one with the monster that destroyed his world, it will now be used to not only destroy his new world, but countless others. Someone who once inspired hope is now the embodiment of death and destruction. This is an amazing twist on what we got from the original game. It really seems as if the end is doing this somewhat out of spite, using Supreme as an example for anyone who tries to defy the end. And I mean, just look at the design change. It turns the somewhat heroic looking Supreme into this creepy looking monster. This design is a much better representation of what kind of monster the end really is. The original design for the end was basically how we were supposed to interpret like the end itself, maybe like death or whatever. However, I like the fact that a fallen hero of their own world, a hero similar to Sonic, is now being used as the avatar of death and destruction itself. This design and story change makes me really like the end a lot more. Oh yeah, and we're going to point number three about the design. I guess I can pretty much just check it off right now, because this one obviously wins. And I think that pretty much says it all. The story explains the design, and both of them do a pretty good job at explaining each other. Now for those wondering why point number four is why Solaris is better, before this new update came out, basically, Solaris was just a better version of the end. I mean, just look at the similar stories that they pretty much told. As soon as they're both revived, they're actually limited somewhat in their capability. In addition, you need to immediately find all the chaos emeralds before it's too late. And when the end is revived, it threatens to destroy the world, and I guess the solar system once it's done with that. And Solaris pretty much does the same thing. You know, with the only difference being that Solaris is going to destroy every existing timeline. But hey, those are basically the same thing, right? This is more of an extra point in the original video, as I'm basically just saying that Solaris isn't as bland as the original version of the end. And hey, I think he's still pretty interesting and is still the most powerful villain Sonic has ever faced. And as for who's stronger, while the end does have pretty good destructive power, Solaris is still clearly the victor in this situation. In order for the end to truly to be able to destroy Solaris, they would have to attack them in the past, present, and the future. However, the end is only able to be one of those places at once. Even then, he reverts time, so in a way he's kind of immortal in that sense as well. Meaning that no matter which way you look at it, the end cannot beat Solaris in a fight. Again, for those who don't get it, I'm not saying that a weaker villain is worse, I'm just saying the end isn't as strong, or even as capable as Solaris. Okay, so it's pretty obvious that I love this final boss. Where I would say the original is the worst, if not one of the worst, this one is the best, if not one of the best final bosses we've gotten in a Sonic game. But there was one pretty big problem which I obviously haven't mentioned up until this point, and I want it to be clear that I'm obviously not hating on the final boss for this one mistake, but it is a pretty big mistake nonetheless. And that is regarding the gameplay when it comes to severing the connection. Now I, my brother, and countless others didn't even know how to sever the connection. This is necessary in order to defeat the final boss, and there are times where I would go in with 900 rings and then leave with zero and have to start over and over again. I actually got to the final boss on day one of the DLC, but wasn't able to beat it until the third day. And that was because I had to Google it, as I was only able to sever the connection three times before that. However, my rings would get shortened down to 100, and I wouldn't know how to sever it again. And unfortunately, when I Googled it, I did see a spoiler about Eggman shooting Sonic out of Supreme's gun. It was the Sonic Power Cannon that I wanted since the original release of the game, and it got spoiled for me. I was pretty defeated, but still happy that I could defeat the final boss and get to see the ending. And what I really don't like is that they made it so you had to 100% the game in order to get the information on how to defeat the final boss. And honestly, that's pretty ridiculous considering the fact that you have to do so much to 100% the DLC. And yes, I actually did end up 100%ing it, but I don't think you should be forced to do so before beating the game and seeing the entire story all the way through. Now, I know there are people out there who already knew how to do it, and kudos to you for doing so, but never in the game was changing attack targets ever needed to defeat a boss. It was only ever really utilized in the night fight, and in the 1.41 update, they actually do tell us that you do need to go sidestep the night titan in order to get past the shield. And it is still better late than never that they did add that. However, that feature itself is still not needed to defeat the night titan, as if you keep attacking it, it'll just move on to the next phase anyway. What I think they should have done was that after completing the side loop animation completely, it would actually sever the connection. This would actually make the animation a lot more useful, as whenever I fight the boss, I actually never use that side loop animation anymore, as it pretty much is just a waste of time. As currently, there's not really much of a reason to side loop the end. Once you know to defeat the boss, it pretty much just wastes your time. And seeing as how the side loop is a primary mechanic in the game, it seems like it would make the most sense for that to be the way to sever the connection. But again, I just want to make it clear that this does not really take away from my final rating of the boss. And again, in the 1.41 update, they did try to rectify this, because it does tell you how to change attack targets during the Night Titan in Master Coco's challenge. Oh yeah, and I guess you could say there's one other downside to this boss fight, and that's the fact that it isn't canon. 
Thank you all for watching. Please consider subscribing and even turning on post notifications. And until next time, this is Jules Prime, and I'll hopefully see you all in the next video.